you are watching Mr. Broviak's English channel. Today is September 7th. We are going to <laughs> I can't do learn about stuff. I thought, I'm sorry, I know Cameron's going to be watching this later, so I was just trying to taunt her, and I thought that'd be kind of, oh wait, Cameron, are you gone? I didn't even notice. And then to the end, I have Becky. Okay. Um, today's the best day, full class of learning. Ooh, do we have anyone in here in single digit B points? Mm -hmm. One kid, but she's aware of it. We have a small, ooh, there is one other kid who is at nine points, but she is standing. And then we have an army of like eight of you who are at 11 or 12 points. But you're all in double digits, just barely, but you're there. There's only one other kid. I may have to send a message about being in single digits unless they find a way to take care of those single digits by tomorrow or I get a chance to help. Uh -huh. It's not important who's a big dum-dum. We're not pointing fingers at the big dum-dum. I hit the wrong button because I'm going to give up. It is awful. Work. Just flippity. What's important is that I never make mistakes. <laughs> ah, there we go. So, first off, looking at your paper. Is your last name on paper? Yes. Because I've had multiple kids showing it to me, and there's no last name on it, and I'd rather not make fun of you if we can avoid it. So I figure I'll remind you. All right. Now you can turn it face down. Your souls are not talking to me yet today. I'm not going to go around and individually call and or pick on you from this part. Uh, except for Chloe, you're going to want to reach over and gently take Gia so you can copy down those notes. Unless she tries to bite your hand, but you should hopefully be safe unless she's really hungry. But for the rest of you, we should be, never mind. The rest of you, we're going to see how well we can do. I'm going to let you do zombie choir. Where instead of calling on a kid, I'm going to put the question out there to the class, and then you guys all get the zombie choir the answer back to me. And we're going to see how that goes. Mm -hmm. As an example, with plot, what is the key word I'm looking for you to say? What? Setting it what? Place. what? The timeline! Did you see how confident he was with that wrong answer? <laughs> that was the confidence that was there. I almost believed him. Again, plot, what happens in the story. So we're going for the what. That's right. We, we, we have another chance. Ooh. 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 You guys. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, you guys are just excited on that one. The. <laughs> Did you say the? No, where? <laughs> where and when? It isn't even on. <laughs> where, where, where and when? Where and when? I got that one. You guys are. I feel like I'm getting where yelled at. The when and the where, the time and the. Are you cheating and looking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> how? 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 For what? You have to wait till I ask the question. How the people person like you guys see how? Learn? How can Mr. How? Robiak charge you so many points so quickly? Wait till the question is asked, then be excited to learn. What words do we say for point of view? How? There how? we go. Oh. All right. There are three points of view we need to know. The three points of view are. First, 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 good. Third, 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 uh, who is telling the story in first person? Is she? Me I mean we. I, yes, tell us no. words. Me, yes, the me main character. Except those were the wrong answers. <laughs> no, the the main one. character. I Good mean job, Gunner. The, the main character. What? The then, I mean we. what I pronouns do we I mean we. Good job. Now we got it. I know, we're just excited to yell out loud, but it's okay, we'll get there. Third person, limited, and omniscient is not a main character. Who is it instead? Narrator. narrator. You were inhaling. I thought it was coming. The narrator, and that's where the he, she, they, them comes in. How many, was that the one you were practicing in your head? Yes. He, she, they, them. He, she, they. Aw. Hang on. Maybe you'll practice the next one. How many characters does limited follow? One. 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 And omniscient is? More than two. More than two. More than two. More than two. This is going to be a game for the year. I 
just like saying words. Words. But we're, we're getting there. Sometimes we're going to say words and be correct, but we'll, we'll save that for March. All right. So at this point, we also started going through, and I talked a little bit about the bunny monster and stuff like that. I showed you the pictures of the lunch bowl and the little bunny monster thing that's up there. I am now going to be writing a story that's already written, or see how you can figure it out. But I realized after showing you guys these things yesterday that kids seemed a little bit doubtful about the existence of bunny monsters. So I came back last night and I decided to roam the hallway so I could find photographic proof. And I found one in the hallways here at school. And he was out there in the hallway. It was just, oh, I know, nibbling on random children toes. And I was like, oh my god. Why are they so special? You may have picked the wrong time to just walk back into the room. It's not important. What I think may or may not be showing a picture of. Why are they so special? of a story. If you remember our throwing of fingers yesterday, yes. not that finger, uh, but your first person, the third person, your limited yes, the L and the O. You seem so excited. And the omniscient. And we're going to see how well we can do with that. I just printed them off so I don't have to turn around and like hurt my neck. So we're going to have you throw hands, fingers, ooh, when you ooh. think. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I already know it's third person limited. I'm going to go ahead and hold it up. I got it. I'll do it. I can't That's change the order, you dumb dumb. so it's not like I can trick you. I'm just going to see how it feels. Oh, let's find out. As I walked up the hill, I realized that the air was too quiet. There was no sound from the bunny monster, who was nearly always growling from the base of the old maple tree. I thought I saw a shadow move high up on the slope. When I looked at it again, it was gone. Where is that creature? I asked under my breath. It's one. It's what happened to that third person limited? No, I was right. What made you yeah. change your mind? Because the Emily oh, limited. Because it says I. And that makes it? Third person limited. Third person, person, limited. Limited. Third person oh, no. limited, right? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, again. Oh. <laughs> it's almost like you have notes right there. The I, me, we, Stella now. I, me, me. Uh huh. Main character. I'm the main character. Hurry. Now you know. yeah. She needs to learn. It's okay. You take your time. She's fine. What? What? Next one. As the scared student walked up the hill, she realized that everything was too quiet. Watching her, the bunny monster tipped his head back and drew breath to growl. No. Just as the first grrr passed his lips, he heard the crack of a dead branch off to his left. Startled, he looked over, cocking his horned head to one side, and watched the strange man with great interest. As the creepy man saw the student start up the hill, he moved quickly into the shelter of the huge old maple tree. If she saw him now, everything would be ruined. I'll just grab her as she walks past, he thought to himself, and smiled a wicked grin. Third person limited. Omniscient. Third person limited. Omniscient. Is third person limited. So I agree, third person. Now from there, I'm oh, saying it's limited. limited. So hang on, let's find out. We seem to be throwing down between our limited and our omniscience. Who is it following here? She. The student. The student. Who is it following here? What are you doing? Who is it following here? The man. Are those different people or the same person? The same person. It's guys, it's different people. It's, guys, it's, different people. No. it's limited. I was right. It's limited to omniscient. Yeah. yeah. You're limited to it being omniscient. Yeah. See, oh my gosh, thank no. you. Good job. Don't listen to the haters. All right. Hey! Haters hey, gonna hate. I'm oh, sorry, are you hating on me? I'm not full of hatred! Was that what you were trying to say to me? Continue no. to our next one. Let's see if Napora can go over for three, uh, three for three. No, I'm just so good at these. Totally. <clears throat> the evil old teacher watched the girl on the hill we got and looked around quite easily. What's that kid yelling while I'm still talking? I'm sorry. I forget. It's almost like she's looking for something, he thought. I wonder what it is. Focusing on the ground, the man noticed a small furry creature in the weeds, but ignored it. The man's real prey was walking towards him, and he had no idea he was even there. Third person limited. I have to say, that's why you have hands. Third. I see thirds. I see thirds. I see. All right. If you're saying limited, what character is it following? The I I see see limited. limited. All right, I'll you. you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You want to go ahead and throw out your guess ahead 
title on this one, see if you can correct. Which one? The next one you're ready to put up there. Can you predict that one too? Yes. Yes. First person. Uh, yeah. First. Yeah. Find out. No second person. Because we did all the other oh. ones, so we're gonna do second person. You're gonna try to trick us. That does not even sound like you see that kid's throwing out a real answer. Let's find out. As you sit in the grass and wiggle your evil bunny <laughs> tail, you watch the girl walk yeah, up the I was hill. Yeah, I right. It's like a person. Are you trying to Lucas your points away? No, I'm Does she have much. any idea I am even here? You wonder, but you dismiss the idea as silly. As silly as a kid yelling at you while you're trying to read a story. No, that's not a no one knows about you. That is until you look up and see the creepy old geezer standing only a few feet away from you. Really? That's what... Why are you holding up twos? Because the second person. Who makes the second person? Because it says you. And so again, so I was again. trying to trick you. It didn't Apparently work. Apparently it didn't See, work. See, I'm smart. Oh, it is. Settle down now. Because those are quotation marks. That's right. I'm going to try and throw you off the quotation marks. No, it didn't throw me off. I What's that? What? <laughs> What's what? The so, the quotation marks, you cannot pay attention to anything in there. Like some of the next ones coming up. I'm going to put a bunch of pronouns in the quotation marks, but it's dialogue. You can never use dialogue to figure out points of view, because people can always talk. You have to ignore anything in the quotation marks, the double comma looking things, and pay attention to everything else. Double upside down double reverse commas. That's obviously what they're called. Mm -hmm. Let's see how well we do with this one. As I walked up the hill, I realized that the atmosphere was just too quiet. There was no sound from the bunny monster, who was nearly always growling from the base of the maple tree. What is he waiting for? I wondered suspiciously. He is such an awful little creature. You can't trick me. I'm too smart. <laughs> How did I try to trick you, Stella? Because you put the he and the he in the quotation. But the he's right there. I was just saying the word he. You're apparently right. He says he. Was not able to uh, trick you yet. Done. Maybe my next one will work then. Yeah. Let's go with. <clears throat> Maybe this will be the one. As the student neared the top of the hill, the quiet atmosphere made her suspicious. The hidden bunny monster tipped his head back and inhaled deeply in order to unleash his terrifying growl. But just as the first grr passed his lips, he stopped and instead gurgled out, I will eat your toes, silly human, they are delicious. <laughs> Hearing the intimidating words of the girl shrieked and then broke into giggles. <laughs> I don't have any toes, you silly creature. You have nothing to eat today. That's crazy. Fifth person? That's not natural. Did you what? drop a piece of candy? You can reach out and grab it. You have arms. And those of you, all right, throwing a three. I agree. And throwing a three. I agree. To the tree and me and we. Are you throwing an L or an O? No. It's an O. On this one, I would actually kind of take both, limited or omniscient. Let's go. Because I've had kids argue both and convince me that it is following one character or the fact that it kind of follows more than one. So I would take both. All right, last one. I think this is the last one. Ah, oh, there it is. I was wrong. I have two left. There it is. What? I yelled in my monstrous fury. How do you not have toes? Every person has toes. Now I want to nibble on yours. But the girl just giggled at my words and bounded away, ignoring everything I said, while my little horn shook in vain. The next person will be mine. And... All right, apparently I'm not as tricky as I thought. Mine, my last one. As you get near your favorite hill, you hear an odd growling sound, and the echoes of a child's giggles bounce off the nearby trees. Looking around with a surprise, you don't see anything to get your attention, and the sound fades away to nothingness. Well, I wonder what that was, you say to the empty road around you. What a man. Did I? Dos. Did I not trick anybody? Okay, well, I was ready to try. We're smart as you see. We're smart as Oh, hey, I did not say those words. You're not trying to misquote me. I'm in freezing. I learned that in this book. Nice. Yes. Uh -huh. Then you should have, even young Chloe, all of this part on there. So now I'm going to make this part disappear so we can finish our last little bits and then we get to a fun little 
Yes, sure. So theme. Yes. Theme is a little bit different than how most people think. The two that people struggle with the most are going to be point of view and theme. It seems you guys know point of view. Nicely done, by the way. I'm not going to use the smart word, but I wasn't ashamed of you. Theme, we're going to see how well we do with that. It's not like if you have a theme birthday party, we have like, my birthday party's princess theme, and everyone shows up in princess outfits. That's a different kind of theme. Short stories have a different definition of theme. Does anyone know the definition? This one's a little bit tough. Oh, I'm kind of impressed. All right. Kid who likes to yell? The moral or, le the moral or lesson of the story. That's the exact definition. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wait. Pretty good. The thing that we learn, the moral, the thing that your lesson that's supposed to be in the story. I wanted to yell at her, but I guess she was right. She knew the correct answer. Because we're smart. Because I'm smart. She was so smart, she didn't have to write down these notes without a teacher yelling at her. You didn't yell at her. Not yet. I was waiting to inhale. I thought maybe things would be taken care of before I had a chance to yell at a kid. So theme, so as an example, well, let's go with a short little story for you. One day, there was a teacher who taught seventh grade. And in this class, there was a girl who made poor choices and chose to stand in a circle. And then the girl who chose to stand in the circle thought she could fight the circle by sitting on top of a thing that was inside the circle. And then it came back to haunt her. And then she got kicked out of the hallway because of her choices, and it was awful. Now, it's a made-up story. I just happened to make up the story. That is the plot of the story. The theme would be not trying to sit on a thing while you're inside of a circle. That would be a theme, which is a thing that you learn in the story. So there's a difference between plot, which is what happens, and theme, which is the thing that the young girl in the circle learned in, in this make-believe story that obviously doesn't really exist. By the way, again, you don't have to write everything. That's why I'm trying to help you figure out which things need to be in there. Our next two connect to each other. Those of you who have siblings, whether older or younger, you should know what the word conflict is. <laughs> what is a conflict? A fight. Be no A disagreement. How quickly we answer. You are correct. So a conflict is going to be a disagreement, a fight, an argument of some kind. Do you guys know what internal is? No. Inside, inside of you. you. Internal. Internal means inside of you. So like your organs should be internal. Unless you get into a fight with like your older sister and she hits you so hard in the stomach that you throw up and your internal organs become external organs and then you're going to die. So internal means staying inside of you. An internal conflict is a battle that happens inside of a character's head. You mean like they're crazy? Kind of. But it's more like you have, let me give you an example. You could stand in circle or you could sit on top of a water bottle. So that would be an internal conflict. Again, these are make-believe things. Why do you guys keep looking at that poor child? So where you have something you can do or something else you can do, there's a term where you have two somethings you can do. We call that making a... An inference. A choice. Choice. with the D. A conflict. A decision. Good job, Gia. A decision. So an internal conflict is a decision a character makes in the story. It is always going to be written blank or blank. Smack my neighbor or keep my B points. Leave my notebook at home or bring it to school and turn it in so I get to go back to my normal seat. So it's always going to be something or, I'm just making up random examples, something or something. So you're always going to have to do one thing or something else. You cannot use the word not. That makes it globetrotter weak sauce stuff. You can't say, smack my neighbor, or not smack my neighbor. Yeah, that's weak sauce. I need you to have two separate ideas. Talk out loud in class, or don't talk it. Yeah, don't is a contraction for do not. So it's just a decision. Don't use the word not. And it's written as something or something. And you're going to want to make sure you know that, because in a little bit, when I call on you, you're going to have to make sure you can tell me how it's written, which is something or something, and then not use not. But we'll get there. External conflict is the one that you guys usually have with your siblings. This is going to be the fight, the battle, two things that throw down in a class. Always written as something versus something. Johnny versus the fish. 
the boy versus the angry bear, the girl versus her inability to write down the notes while sitting in struggle tab and losing more points and becoming sad. So there's always going to be something versus something in a story. So we try to help you out from that. Again, they're just random examples. I'm just creative as I come up with things. And yes, there are things at the bottom of the page, but we're not going to do those today. I'm afraid of making your head explode. There's already too much knowledge in there. We have other learning we're going to do in just a moment. As I continue to waste time, like his catch up with his writing things down, is that the screen's going to disappear. And we're going to get to read a really short story, and we're going to see how well you can figure things out. Those of you who are done, you can look at the backside. You can still look at the notes if you need to help yourself. But tomorrow, we're going to end up doing homework together. This is the homework we are doing together. We're going to read a story, and you're going to have to figure out the plot, the characters, the setting, point of view, theme, and all of those things. I will help you with it tomorrow because it's the job of being a teacher. Today, you don't have to write anything down. Today is just in your brain. I'm trying to help you sort of work through it. To help you with this, the story we're going to do is about a small turtle and a little bunny rabbit who get into a little fight. There's a chance you've heard versions of this story in the past. This one, I tried to find one that you might be familiar with. Now, to remind you, this is not homework. You do not write it down. This is just going to go in your brain. So don't freak out and try to figure out where you have to write it. This is just a thinky thing. What if I'm not good at thinking? It explains a lot. There we go. My little papery thing. This story is called The Tortoise and the Hare. There once was a sassy rabbit who thought he was all, oh, sorry. So when we get done, I'm gonna read this, and then this is where your souls are going to talk to me. And I'm gonna look around and figure out, and say, hey, Abby, who are the three characters in the story? Nyla, what is the setting in the story? You are more than welcome to tune me out and go to your happy place. But if your soul and asks me to call on you, and you're confused, don't yell at me. You yell at your soul. Who thought he was all that in a bag of chips? He would brag to all of the other animals in the forest about how much faster than them he was. I have never yet been beaten, he said. Whenever I want to win, I will most definitely destroy anybody who steps up. I challenge anyone in this forest to a race with me. A friendly turtle who had been listening to the annoying bunny for weeks on end said quietly, I accept your challenge. <laughs> That's a good joke, said the confident hare. I can dance around you all the way. You're not even worth the effort of a laugh. Yeah. Just keep talking, answered the tortoise. Until you've actually beaten me, your words mean nothing. Shall we race? So an impromptu racetrack was created, and a start line was dragged in the dirt. As soon as the owl yelled, Go! The hare took off at a sprint and was almost out of sight at once. But... About halfway down the track, he stopped and came up with a plan. He wanted to show that dumb turtle just how stupid he was for sassing him in front of friends. To insult the scrubby little tortoise, he just lay down in the middle of the road and took a nap. The tortoise, meanwhile, plodded on and on. He ignored the rabbit and just did what he did best, walk without stopping. Eventually, when the hare awoke from his taunting nap, he looked up to see the tortoise almost across the finish line. And no matter how much he sprinted and swore, he could not catch up in time to save the race. The tortoise and the hare. Have you guys heard that story before? Yeah. Yeah, making sure. We're good to go. So now, let's see how well brainy bits go. Characters. There were three characters in that story. Chloe, how many of the three characters can you remember? By saying them out loud. The tortoise. Okay. The hare. Good. Harry. Can you remember the third character? The owl. Nice to done. So you have the hare, the tortoise, and the owl. Those are the three. Emery, yeah, you get that. I call on you. Those are the you going to do that? You're going down to setting? We're not there yet. There's another learning thing first. If you look on the homework for tomorrow where it says characters, Every time you give me a character, you also have to give me just a short couple word description of the character so I can tell one character apart from another character. So as an example, when Ryan Tyne gives me a description of the hair, 
it can't be something like an animal, because that would apply to multiple, or is it a race, because that would apply to more than one. So you have to come up with a description that only fits that character in the story. So Ryan Tyne, for the hair, what would be a good description of something the hair does in the story? Self-obsessed. Uh, uh, <coughs> self that works for me. Self-centered? Yeah. I went for sassy and fast, takes nap. Your description does not have to be the same as mine. It just has to be something that sets that character apart so that we can tell. Weevils, uh, the tortoise, what do you have for that one? What does the tortoise do in the story that's different than sassy, fast, self-centered, and stuff like that? He's smart and slower. Works for me. I went for calm, slow, wins race, something like that. The owl only does one thing in the whole race. What is the one thing the owl does? Set up the tread. Yeah. He's the one that starts the race and is loud, something like that, and should be good to go from there. Emory, there are two parts to setting. What are the two parts of any setting? They both start with W and are question words. You get to talk. I'm calling on you. Yeah. Um, where? Uh-huh. When? It's correct. Good job. When? Where? In this story, it doesn't really tell us when. The best I could come up with was a long time ago, and I figured that would kind of work. But Abby is right. There are wheres in the story. Because we can find out is it taking place like on a spaceship or underwater or on top of the Titanic. So in the story, where is the main setting of it? On a dirt track. And where is that dirt track? In the spaceship? Like on the desert? On the ground. <laughs> what's, what's, what's around the dirt track? Like around it? A forest. Nicely done, Abby! And so we have a forest, which might be the main setting, and then the racetrack is going to be inside the forest. We were on the same page. I had you on that one. Good job. So then we're going to go to plot. And again, if you look at the little homework you think, every time I do plot, we're going to break it down into five main parts. The very beginning, the very end, I will give you the middle, and we just figure out the two and four parts from there. So as an example, Kaysen, sorry, is she head? What do you remember as the first big thing that happened in the story that you can remember? Rabbit and announcing Works for me. Rabbit brags about being the fastest and talking about the race. But then Martinez, if you jump all the way to the end for number five, what's the last big thing that happens? Um, the tortoise wins the race right after the Works for me. I put rabbit loses the race, or turtle, turtle wins the race. I will give you number three, because it makes life easier. So number three, rabbit and turtle race through the woods. So I hope that helps. Right, you know? Ooh. 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 You might have to turn around and cover the microphone. The problem is, when you talk non-stop, you have to keep swallowing air, and that's what makes you have to burp, is the air swallowing. So by this time of the day, I've been talking, and I keep swallowing, and then all of a sudden, the air just bubbles up. Sorry. Science. Back to here. Um, Stella. So, oh, hi, Stella. Is it is a rabbit and a hare the same thing? Yeah. Is a turtle and a tortoise the same thing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did we just have a learning moment? No, I already knew that. Of course. I mean, I knew you knew that. that was yeah, I was just, I was just making sure you knew I, I did that. Stella, we're now going to figure out number two. If number one is the rabbit brags about being the fastest, and number three is the rabbit and turtle race the woods, what has to happen between those two things? The, the turtle says that I'll race you, the rabbit. Perfect. There you go. Turtle accepts the challenge to a race, and they have the little throw down and racy thing from there. Lucas, if three is the rabbit and turtle race the he woods. He takes a nap. <laughs> Four is going to be the rabbit takes a nap, just like that. That's how we're going to do plot. Beginning, end, I give you middle, and then two and four. Seems to make things way easier on kids, and I'm all for making things easier on you. Point of view, I don't expect you guys to remember it off the top of your head, so I'll show it to you again. I'll have you throw fingers, if you can figure out from looking at it what you think it is, we'll see how well we do, or how well you can cheat off a kid you think is smarter than you. We'll see how well you choose on your cheater piece. I agree. Let's use the third. And it looks like a, almost everyone is omniscient. Good job. And so it should be omniscient because it jumps around, follows the hare for part of it, and the turtle for part of it, and stuff like that. For the theme, this one's a little trickier. What is it and, wait, wait, that you think that any of the characters should learn from our story? 
Stella. Don't think that you're better than people, because it can always come back to you. So, hey, one more thing. On theme, I will almost always give you some credit if you can explain how it connects to the story with evidence. So, I'm coming back to you. So, explain how yours connects to the story with evidence. When the, when the um, rabbit taunted the turtle, it ended up losing, and it came back to the rabbit because the rabbit didn't win. Perfect. That's what I would take. And the joy of theme is there's lots of different ones you can come up with. The, do you guys know the moral that's supposed to go with the story? Mm, don't brag. No. Ian? Don't be cocky. No, that would make more sense. I like that one better. The actual one is supposed to be slow and steady wins the race. Uh, yeah, I feel the same way. Bro's right. I do not think it's a very good one. I think don't be cocky is better. I think yeah. that there's I had a kid earlier who was like, Don't judge a book by its cover because you think what? the turtle's gonna lose. And I'm like, I think all of those are better. The joy of theme is as long as you can explain it and it makes sense and you can get me to believe you, then it'll probably work. So that's Guess how the theme like, works. That's like, like girl boss gatekeep. Guess I think he girl boss. She hit her head. It's okay. No, that's a just <laughs> poster in my room. Lover era. Just not making it less weird. It's okay. So then we're going to jump to internal conflict, which is going to be the major decision that happens in our story. So ooh, let me get to this one. See how good our notes are, Nyla. So on this one with internal conflict, how is it we're supposed to always write an internal conflict? There are... Right. What's the word that has to be used in there? In theory, it's in your notes under internal conflict that you might have written down. And if I talk slowly enough, we may get to the part where you find the end. Hi, Nayla! Um, major decision story. It is. And then how do we write it? Something and something. But something goes between the somethings. Blank versus blank? There you go. Something versus something, or blank versus blank, and there is, you're not done yet, Nyla, there's one more. There's a word you cannot use in this writing to make fun of you. And what word can you not use? Do you know what word you cannot use? What's that? Weak sauce is what we're pointing to. That's not, you were, I'm glad you wrote down weak sauce. That's awesome. But there you go. You cannot use the word not. So when Kaysen is going to come through and figure out that yeah, here's where it gets tough, Kaysen. There is no decision in the story because there's no point where I have to So you have to use this thing called imagination, which seems really exciting. So you're going to have to imagine what decision the turtle would have made in the story. So what do you think the decision the turtle would have made in the story? To decide to stand up to the I put race rabbit. Or, as, as Nyla pointed out, we have to say or. Now this doesn't happen in the story, so now this is where your imagination comes in. What could he have done instead? If he chooses not to race the rabbit. Did you just use the word not? <laughs> Nyla just told you not. Go ahead, Casey. So instead of racing the rabbit, so this is where again the imagination has to come up. But what could he do instead of racing the rabbit? Perfect. That's what I did too. Just move on. So even though that never happened in the story, that's where your imagination comes in. Yeah. Why do you say blank versus blank? As in for here, when yeah. you're setting up the internal conflicts, that you always have to know it's a decision between two things. I thought you said it's blank or blank. She says, they didn't say versus blank. What? Okay. Mm -hmm. But now, going over to candles, turns out the rabbit also gets to make a decision in the story. About halfway through, he makes a big decision. And what decision does he choose to do? He just beat the turtle or taunt him? Works for me. I went the other way around. Taunt with a nap or just finish out the race, but the exact same idea. Nicely done for you. And then from there, as we figure out my last ones to pick on from Gia. Hey. Hey. Gia, for our ex wait, what word has to be used in an external conflict? Oh, uh, blank versus blank. Nice, well done. So Gia, what two things are fighting each other in this story? What? What two things are fighting each other? The hair and the tortoise. But you just told me how we're supposed to write it. Wait, what? How are we supposed to write it? 
Oh. You can't leave until Gia's done. I don't make her sad. Oh. So how are we supposed to ride it? Uh, Nicely done. I had faith in you.